In this video, I'll show you how you can reliably send emails from your Node-based web application using the powerful but easy to use Node Mailer library. Out of the box, Node Mailer comes with a couple of different mail transports, but I'll be showing you how to use the SMTP transport in this example. In order to use an SMTP transport, you'll need some kind of SMTP server, and of course you can use Gmail or Outlook for this. However, I would recommend if you're sending any serious amount of email or using this in a production scenario to sign up for a service like SendInBlue or SendGrid. These services are designed specifically for developers who want to send large amounts of automated email and you won't run into things like API rate limits or bot filters, that kind of thing. So with that said, let's dive into some code. To keep things simple, I've just created a single file node application, but you can adapt this example for use in your Express, Nest or Next projects. I've also installed the node mailer package with the command npm-save node mailer. So it's always good practice to keep your secrets like email credentials out of source code. So in this example, I have created a .env file and I have imported the .env package and configured it so I can access my secrets on my process. To use node mailer, I'll first add a require call at the start of my file and create a const node mailer. Now before sending an email, we need to create a transport that is configured to use our SMTP server details. So to do that, I'll use the create transport function on our node mailer. And create transport takes an object parameter that contains the details of our SMTP server. The first key is the host. In this case, smtp-relay.sendinblue.com. The next key is port, which is number 587 in our case, but your SMTP provider may be different. And finally, we'll add a nested object, auth. This contains the credentials for our SMTP server. So we have user, and we're going to add process.env.user from our env file, and pass, which is our process.env.secret. So that's it for our create transport. We can now use it to send our email. Now the mail transport contains a function called send mail that is awaitable. It returns a promise. So let's create an async function to call it. And now we can finally use our send mail function and we can pass into this an object that defines our email. And the first key we want is from. This is the email address we want to send from. Next is the to field or the recipient. So let's send this to robertsdevtalk at gmail.com. And now finally we can add our subject. We have two fields we can now use for the message body. First is a text field. Now this is for email clients that don't display HTML. And the second is a HTML field for those that do. So we can display some text for everyone. So let's create first a plain text text field. And now we'll create our HTML field. So we'll add in some HTML in here, perhaps a nice H1 and also a paragraph with a message. And that's all we really need to add for now. So let's run this and then dump the results out of the console so we can see what we get. So that all looks great. We've got a 250 response, which is a really positive response from the SMTP server to say our message has been accepted. Now what happens if you want to also send an attachment? Node Mailer makes this really simple and supports direct file paths, buffers, URLs, and even a base64 data URI. But for this example, I've got a little test PDF file in my project folder that I can attach. So to configure my attachment, I just need to add an extra key attachments to my send mail parameters. And this is an array. So inside my attachments array, I'll just add one object with a file name. This is the file name that will appear to the recipient. And a path. This is the actual path on disk. So I'll just point it to test.pdf. I could also, of course, add a buffer or stream here and Node Mailer will take care of everything for me. So let's run this again and see what happens. That's all good. Notice we also have a message ID and we can use this to track our message. And I'll show you what this looks like in the Send in Blue dashboard. Here is the message log in Send in Blue. Notice I can click on my email and see the content and the same tracking ID I was given by Node Mailer. So this makes it really simple to track emails through a system after they're sent. And here is my email safely landed in my inbox. 
I can see my subject, my content, and also open my attachment and everything looks great. So that's how easy it is to send email from your Node web application using the Node Mailer library. It's really taken the pain out of sending email for me. I really enjoy using it and I've put a link in the description for you to have a look. I've also put a link to Sendinblue, which is the email service that I use in my applications. Go check them out, they've got a good free tier. If this has been useful to you, please do drop a like and consider subscribing. We put out content every week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you